Hi, I'm Tyler Oberly, Safety Program Manager at DL Steiner Incorporated, an electrical engineering and consulting firm based in Ohio. We specialize in electrical safety, reliability, and energy management. Every year, there are more than 3,000 disabling contact injuries resulting from preventable electrical accidents in the workplace. Did you know that electrical accidents are 10 to 30 times more likely to be fatal compared to other workplace accidents? So what's your company doing to ensure a safe environment? Electrical safety is a critical issue in the workplace and is required to be a part of every company's safety program. Electrical accidents have far-reaching consequences beyond lost time, damage to equipment, or a jump in insurance premiums. They can also greatly affect a company's image in the community and may lead to costly litigation. In fact, three of the top 10 OSHA violations are related to electrical safety. One of these major issues is arc flash. So what is arc flash? Arc flash is an electrical explosion accompanied by blinding flash of light powerful shock waves, and extreme temperatures as high as 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Arc blast is an extreme form of arc flash where sounds exceed 160 decibels and molten metal and shrapnel are thrown out at greater than 700 miles an hour. Arc flash most commonly occurs through some form of interaction, whether it's human or mechanical interaction, during maintenance or even during regular operation, it can be because of poor maintenance of your equipment or debris throughout the facility. So why is arc flash important to you? Well, there's three main reasons it should be considered. The first is safety, the second is risk management, and the third is the law. Number one, safety. It's absolutely critical that all employees recognize electrical hazards in the workplace and take the necessary actions to prevent injury. Number two, risk management. The cost of an OSHA fine can be in the tens of thousands of dollars and can lead to further OSHA investigations in your facility. Also, workplace fatalities and injuries can lead to costly litigation and higher insurance costs. And number three, it's the law. OSHA's general duty clause states, a place of employment must be free from recognized hazards that are causing or likely to cause death or serious physical harm to employees. And arc flash is a recognized hazard. Arc flash has occurred in industrial facilities like manufacturing and food processing plants, commercial facilities like warehouses and nursing homes, and public facilities, including schools and universities. So what can you do about arc flash? There's three main steps you can take towards your goal of an electrically safe workplace. The first one is educate yourself. This video is helping you understand more about this important topic. The second one is learn what it takes to address this hazard in your own facility. And number three, take action. We'll share some resources at the end of this video. What am I required to do at my facility? OSHA looks to the NFPA for guidance on the issue of electrical safety in the workplace. The National Fire Protection Agency has decades of experience in electrical and fire safety, and they've created the NFPA 70E. The NFPA 70E requires an electrical safety program be established in your facility. DL Steiner recommends that your electrical safety program include the following components. An initial system study should include a short circuit analysis and equipment evaluation, protective device coordination, an arc flash hazard analysis, training for your qualified workers, labeling of your equipment and proper PPE for employees, and the NFPA 70E states that recurring training should be every three years and arc flash studies should be updated every five years or after any major system change. So where can I start? The first step is to find an arc flash contractor. DL Steiner provides competitively priced arc flash studies nationwide. The second step is to request a proposal. Understand what you're getting. All arc flash studies and contractors are not created equal. Visit the link at the end of the video to download a contractor comparison sheet. Third step, choose a firm that best meets your needs. Some questions to consider is what type of experience does the contractor have? And also what else do they bring to the table? Do they provide a short circuit and equipment evaluation? Do they provide training and labeling for your equipment? Also, what kind of ongoing engineering support and mitigation recommendations do they provide? So as you can see, addressing our flash hazard in your facility can be a daunting task if you go it alone. It could be a waste of your time and money if you choose the wrong firm. Remember, this is an investment in safety, an insurance policy against the costly consequences of ignoring this critical workplace safety issue. If you'd like to learn more about ArcFlash, take a look at some of our other videos on the DL Steiner YouTube channel. Also, make sure to visit our website at dlsteiner.com. Good luck.